What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the YouTube channel for another conversation about Dinner in America, a movie that I'm not going to shut up about and that you need to see. I have Kyle Gallner here. What is up? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am doing very well because this movie is finally getting the release it deserves. <sighs> I know. <laughs> long time, long time coming. It was like we hit Sundance and then the world exploded and everything. You know, it's been like this uphill battle since, but we finally, we finally got there. It's finally coming. It is about damn time. I'm so happy. Um, obviously, every collaboration is different, but you've worked with some pretty cool people over the years. So do you find that there are any constants there, you know, like a consistent quality you like to see in the people that you're about to work with when you sign on for a new project? I mean, you want somebody who knows what they're talking about, first of all. You know, that's that's important. You want somebody who feels passionate about the project they're making. You know, some people just feel like hired guns and they're like, I know how to put the pieces together and make a picture and make it look good and this and that. And, um, and that's fine. Sometimes those movies turn out great, but I like the people who like these movies mean everything to them. You know, they've worked super hard to get it off the ground. They sometimes have written it themselves or they've developed in themselves. There's just, there's just a passion behind it. And something like dinner in America, is, you know, with Adam having, I mean, this guy wrote it, edited it, directed it. I mean, I, he did everything. This was like his baby. These people were so close to him. The script was so close to him. And when you talk to him about it, you know, that world he's created, he knows it inside and out and it just excites you to want to jump into that world you know with somebody who knows it so well like you want to be a part of it you want to help create it you want to help build it um so i, I you know it's kind of like a vibe thing it's a feeling it's it's how somebody talks about something it's how somebody it's almost kind of hard to put into words. Like you sort of almost just get an instinct about somebody, you know, and, and Adam was one of those guys when, when I FaceTimed with him to talk about the film and we, we talked for like three and a half hours. We just, just couldn't stop talking. And it was like hanging out with a friend, you know, even though we had just met and, you know, in that moment, you're like, Oh man, please let me do this with you. Let's jump into uh finding Simon a little bit here because the last time yeah. we spoke you emphasized how Adam really let you and Emily be the Simon and Patty that you wanted to be so can you tell us a little bit about finding the character and maybe you know what what are some of the biggest differences between the character you read on the page day one and what we see in the final film so yeah like you said like the best part about that was like Adam really trusted me and Emily and we really trusted Adam so Adam let us find these characters and create these characters and he you know he would kind of gently guide us a little bit if if we wanted to you know talk about taking things in one direction or another and if things didn't feel right we would we would start shifting the nice thing was we had a little bit of time and then we also had like three weeks of time in detroit before we started shooting you know and we got to record all the music and we got to do everything and really recording the music helped and getting into the wardrobe and getting into the haircut that all changes things it changes your physicality it changes how you move it changes how you feel um those types of things for me are really helpful because they're really tangible you know like the way somebody looks at you when you walk into a store with like your mohawk and your your jacket and your stuff it it, it changes people look at you differently you know they treat you differently um and then before we got to Detroit, it was little things like there's there's kind of like an animal thing to Simon. There's like a primal thing to Simon. Like if you watch, there's all these little things of like when he eats, he like guards his food. You know, it's little things like that or coming up with the way he 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 walks. There's like a swagger. There's an intention to the way he moves. It's it's like a shark. He never stops moving forward, you know. 
Um, so it was finding those things, but the, but the hardest part almost was being comfortable with those things and being comfortable with the abrasiveness of him and, and how gnarly he is because, you know, everyday society, you're taught not to be like that. So it's almost like breaking these, these norms that I would, I would go out into the world with not just on set, but I would take it out into the world to just like put it on. And it's, it's a strange feeling. Like I'm, you know, I'm somebody who's yes, please. Thank you very much. And then, you know, you suddenly start dropping that stuff and you're being short with people or people can go fuck themselves or like fuck whatever, you know, it, it, it changes a lot. Um, so it was really just trying a bunch of different skins on until I felt like we were, on the right path and then again it was super helpful to get out to detroit early to meet emily and get to see what emily was doing with patty and get to really you know get face to face with adam and and just sort of be like does this work let's see if this works let's see if this doesn't let's play with these things and then you know recording the music was was extremely helpful and informative just to get into that mindset and lifestyle and 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 it, it was really just piecing them together bit by bit and then we shot for a day or two and after about 48 hours we really felt hello we really felt um comfortable and then by like the first week we were just sort of flying and we were able to just push it further and further which was great and that's a testament to emily and adam and everybody trusting each other to really just push this thing to 11 the whole time. So many follow-ups about that. First, we get a little taste of this in the movie, and it doesn't really need all these additional details, but I find that I get obsessive over backstory information when I really fall hard for characters. All those those mannerisms and the person that Simon's become. Did you ever come up with any, you know, like major life events that kind of added up to all that and inspired him to, you know, carry himself the way that he does? Yeah, I mean, I think it was just, you know, that that dinner with his family is very telling. You know, I think I think he's pushing he's pushing back against that. He's pushing back against his upbringing. He's pushing back against where he's at. I I think he's very frustrated with the state of the world. I think he's he's just frustrated with where he is and I think he feels very very trapped and he just that all comes to the forefront you know I, I I think I I think it all started with him rebelling against his family and it really just it really just went from there I don't think he likes what they stand for I don't think he likes what they are I don't think he even really likes them all that much except for his brother um and you know, there's always kind of a counterculture. You know, I grew up, me and my parents are close. They're nothing like that. But I grew up in a very sort of simple kind of life. And then I actively seeked out other things. Like I grew up on punk and hardcore music. I grew up going to hardcore shows. I grew up, you know, running for cops with my skateboard. Like it was almost like, okay, this is this thing. I'm going to go the the opposite way and steal beers from my neighbor's garage and be drunk with my friends at 14 years old. And, you know, running around the golf course, throwing flags into the ponds and getting in trouble and doing whatever. Um, you know, I think Simon just took that in a very in a further direction. <laughs> do you, do you have a, a background in music or was there any, uh, you know, additional uh, training or rehearsing required to be able to play everything you do here? I have a background in music in the way of like, I've always wanted to have a background in music. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never, you know, I never really did. I never played. I never, you know, I never anything. I've always enjoyed like singing in my car or whatever. Um, and I love that kind of music. Um, you know, I've had teenage fantasies of being in a punk band or being in like a pop punk band or I've always wished I could just scream like those dudes in hardcore band. I don't know how they do it. It blows my mind, but I've always wanted to just be front and center throwing down on stage. So 
you know, for me, it was less that I actually did it and more of like, I've always fantasized about it, <laughs> you know, and went to shows and, and saw these guys do these things. And, and so it's a world I'm familiar with. It wasn't like stepping into another planet. It was something that I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I could, these are shoes that I could slip into. You sell it like incredibly well. I totally believed you had that background. And I feel like now you and Emily should just like run off and, and consistently make music together because I would listen to it. Yeah. I mean, all those vocals in the movie, that's, that is all me. That's all. I recorded those. I did all those. Um, so everything you hear is if I, if it's me singing, it's me. If it's Emily, it's Emily. There's a really great band called Disco Assault that had the music um they laid down some scratch you know vocals and i got to take it in hear what it was and we went into the studio and recorded it that was like the day after we landed in detroit they were like all right let's go legit talented it's it's fantastic stuff oh. i'm sure you've heard this a million times but like i don't i i can't get that song out of my head i've had it stuck in my head for two years now and i'm happy with it there the watermelon song? Yeah, the watermelon song is incredible. It's incredibly it's catchy. Un it's unbelievable. That was Emily and Adam. Um, they sat down. We all sat down. I just kind of watched because it was like I I was being included, but also this was their thing. And I, I, I was like, I just want to see where the hell Emily's head's at. <laughs> and she had this whole like notebook of like stream of conscious Patty poetry that she'd written. And a lot of it was just pulled from this little notebook and her and Adam sat down and just wrote this song together. And it was a really pretty profound moment, especially for me coming from Simon's point of view to hear these insane things coming out of this person's mouth. And I'm like, this is, this is it. This is where she's coming from. Like, holy crap. And it was really an eye-opening moment to be like, that's Patty. There she is. It was cool. Absolutely. Can you tell me a little more about working with Emily? Uh, maybe, is there anything she did for you as a scene partner that you really appreciated and maybe even helped you find something in Simon that you might not have been able to reach without her? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean every day like every day um emily is fearless and worked so hard to create patty and and truthfully i think in the wrong hands patty could have been an absolute disaster um i, I think it's such a difficult role and i think uh, and i think what she did with it was Incredible. I mean, she found exactly who she was supposed to be. She didn't push it too far one way or the other. She was just so the embodiment of this incredible person, you know? And she was, like I said, she was so fearless that she, she just pushed me every day. And we trusted each other. Like we were each other's safety nets. I knew if I was going to try something and if I was going to try to push it as far as I could go, Emily would be there to catch me and to be there and to either go with it or whatever. Um, so I felt very safe with Emily, which for a movie like this is incredibly important because these characters are so big. They're so kind of over the top and in, in a lot of ways, but also very grounded that you have to be at 11 the whole time or else the film doesn't work. If you're scared and you're holding back or your scene partner's holding back and you guys aren't taking it to where it needs to go, then this, this film doesn't work. You know, so I owe a lot to Emily, actually. I owe a lot to her. She's amazing. You two both, I, I don't think this movie works unless you kind of get that that pitch perfect marriage of of making the audience uncomfortable, but also exuding heart through your performances. And, and both of you just absolutely nail it on your own and with your chemistry together. 
It does kind of make me wonder, though, was there any particular thing that Simon does in the movie that proved to be the most challenging in nailing that balance where maybe you had a workshop how far to push it? The challenge was just having the balls to push it and to also not question pushing it and to take it there and then realize, oh, it's not far enough yet. You know, it's almost that mental game of like, how could it go any further? And it's like, well, it has to, you have to go, you know? Um, so that, that was the challenge of like knowing when far was not far enough and knowing that you need to even push it further and being comfortable with that, you know, because a lot of the stuff I've done, not a lot of it, but like, you know, a lot of film stuff for the most part is pretty subtle or pretty, you, you know, there's a, there's a different thing depending on, depending on, depending on the, the project, you know, and I haven't gotten to play a lot of big, loud guys like Simon. So like a lot of the things I've done have been a little more, a little lower, I guess you could say, I don't know. I don't know what the terminology that would be, but um, so it took me out of my comfort zone for sure even though Simon is probably closer to me than a lot of these other people that I've played, it still took me a little while to figure out how to really take him to his max and to stay there. Cause the thing with Simon is he's pretty much there the whole movie. Like he's at 11, almost the entire, the entire film. All right. Thank you so much for your time today, Kyle. And for everybody out there, please trust me when I tell you, you need to see Dinner in America. And you have two options for this. You could see it in theaters beginning May 27th, and it's also going to be available on VOD on June 7th. So you have no excuse. Go watch that movie.